Hey guys and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be taking you through the different avenues that I tend to search for retro video games and where to find the best deals on the internet. I'm going to be taking you through some of the sources that I don't use and explaining why and then I'm also going to show you the primary ways that I find the best deals that I possibly can for retro gaming and I collect primarily for the N64, NES, SNES, as well as the Sega Genesis. If you're looking to get more retro gaming content in the future, you can click that subscribe button. And if you like this kind of content, you can click that uh, thumbs up button. It really helps us out. So heading right into this video, the first site that I wanted to touch on is Goodwill. Now, maybe a few years back, maybe three, four or so years ago, uh, Goodwill had some decent value on their website, but they've become much more known and as a result there's a lot more competition to get these items and also they just don't have the kind of selection that I personally am looking for and typically with Goodwill you'll get a bit higher in terms of the shipping and handling fees which I'm not a big fan of as well so I don't typically go to Goodwill for these reasons um, as a result it used to be a pretty good place to find deals but not so much anymore especially that more people have been able to find them and uh, go in through their auctions to really bid things up more to retail prices. Uh, a few more sources that I wanted to touch on. There's a lot of websites purely dedicated to retro gaming and out of all of them, JJ Games has been my favorite. It's not necessarily the place where you can get amazing deals, but if you're looking for particular games it doesn't have the worst prices and what I do like them for primarily is more common titles you can find um, some decent prices on common games and they have free shipping on all games so that helps the bottom line as well some of the sites that I don't really like um, that sell retro games are DK Oldies, Lukey Games, and East Starland um, including them with JJ Games out of those four sites if I had to pick my favorite it would be JJ Games and I've made purchases through JJ Games in the past and I usually get games that are in pretty good condition and they're fairly accurate and how they describe what kind of condition the games are in that you're purchasing from them so that's the main retail you know websites that you can find um, you know you can also go to places like GameStop has retro games as well as Amazon in their used games area has retro games but I never typically find great deals on either of those sites and condition is always a worry especially with um, a place like GameStop so I definitely avoid those places as well so heading into the main way that I find great deals it's gonna be eBay.com and the reason eBay is so great is because they just have a ton of options if you want a one specific game you can find it um, you know just the plethora of games really make the market a bit more competitive on eBay although eBay is also well known for the fact that people tend to ask more than you would want to pay but there is a way around this and I'm gonna show you the um, primary ways that I find deals on games on eBay so let's just say for instance I want to find an N64 system so I'll type in N64 and I won't even type in console after that because you can filter by console so right now it's video game console is my filter and the first thing that I typically do is I'll go to time ending soonest and I'm not interested in the buy it now is that are ending soonest because those are generally gonna be things that are overpriced because they've you know gone through their whole life cycle on eBay and they're just getting to the closing minutes probably not gonna be a good deal so you only want to look at auctions that are coming to an end and let's just see what we got here so ones that don't have bids on them generally mean that it's gonna be overpriced not even necessarily with the listed price but for the shipping so since this N64 system has zero bids it's either in really poor condition doesn't have the cables or it has really high shipping so we'll just head in to see uh, and this particular one has free local shipping uh, let's see what their shipping details are okay so this one doesn't have any bids apparently because as far as I see the shipping information is not very specific not all that surprising people want to know what they're getting into when they put a bid on something 
going on down here we see an n64 for 80 bucks with zero bids so i'm also assuming that this one it's a little bit overpriced at that $80 market and also has $15 for shipping, so not surprised to see zero bids on that as well. Um, but anyways, that's just one strategy that I use is just going through the time ending soonest auctions. I don't necessarily always find the greatest deals with that particular search function, but heading into another function that I like to use is I like to go to um, just price plus shipping lowest first, and this is for a buy it now scenario you don't really care about auctions that are price plus shipping lowest first and then you can just scroll down and as you work your way up you'll generally at some point um, tend to find what you're looking for in terms of um, let's say you type in a specific game or something and you know at the bottom there might be like replacement labels or things such as that so let's just type in Mario Kart 64 so we'll get like labels and things such as that and you go down a little bit further and then you finally start to get into games and almost exclusively you'll find the Japanese versions of the games um, as the first results much lower than the American versions of the game and for me personally I, I have region free mods on my systems just for the reason of being able to buy Japanese games. Um, you know, there's a lot of Japanese games where it's going to be really tough to play because there's a lot of dialogue and text screens. Um, and in that situation, obviously, it'd be hard to play a game. But for instance, Mario Kart 64, I have the Japanese version because I got it for like 10 bucks on eBay with free shipping in comparison to the American versions. Let's see how far we have to scroll down before we even run into the American version of this game. Not even on the first page. We keep going. And also, just as... Um, a note to this, you can filter by region as well. So if you only want American games, you can filter by just um, North America, United States, or region codes. But me personally, I buy a lot of Japanese version games because you tend to get a much better deal. All right, continuing to scroll down still. Okay, so here's the first one we find. Um, and it has a please read description. So this could be a reproduction uh, very well. That's another thing you have to be careful with on eBay is make sure you're getting something that's not a reproduction or, you know, it'll have different things like please read description or things like that in the title that hopefully point you to the fact that it's a reproduction cart. Uh, here's another reproduction. All right, so here we finally have an authentic one, and it's 40 bucks with shipping, and it's got a terrible label. So you can see why... I'm not a big fan, especially with really expensive games going American, if you can go the Japanese route. I got my Mario Kart, the Japanese version, for about 10 bucks, and it's just as good as the American version. It's just the menus are in Japanese instead of American. And also, you know, the noises that some of the characters make are different, but I kind of find that cool that it's different than the game that I grew up with slightly. Um, but yeah, so that's one of the other ways that I utilize eBay. And then the third way is I go to Time Newly Listed. And, you know, you can scroll through the Time Newly Listed and you can get situations where maybe it's somebody's parents who are putting their games or putting everything at a lot on eBay and they don't necessarily know how much the stuff is worth. Or maybe they'll look up what a Mario Kart 64 is worth and they'll see the Japanese versions listed at 10 bucks so maybe they'll list their American version at 10 bucks not knowing that there's anything different so when you filter by time newly listed you're gonna get a higher percentage chance of finding the better deals than time ending soonest for the buy it now category because obviously if something's a really good deal uh, it's gonna get bought up rather early so you're gonna wanna be there when it's newly listed so you can get the First chance at getting the purchase. My counsel for N64, this is how I went about doing it. Um, I just put in that newly listed and buy it now, and I got an N64 with the cords and a yellow controller that had a was in great condition, has a great stick on it with seven games. Um, some common titles in there, but also fun games like 1080, Wave Race, and the big one was GoldenEye, and I got it for $54.99, and I think it was like... 10 bucks shipping so about 65 bucks altogether and if that would have been something that was in an auction 
or I wouldn't have known to filter in this specific way, it would have been gone way before then. Or if it was in an auction, it would have definitely sold for higher than what I paid for it. So you can certainly run into deals by filtering in that way. And just with these three different strategies on eBay, it works really well because there's just so many people that put their stuff on eBay. Um, for this Mario Kart 64 search alone, we have 424 results. Now, maybe the American version that's not a reproduction might be about 50 of those, but even 50 is a lot bigger number than what you're going to find over at Goodwill or JJ Games or any of these other places, Amazon, eStarland, and all the rest. So those are the primary uh, strategies that I use to find my deals personally for retro video gaming systems. I hope what I've presented to you today can help you in any kind of way to help grow your collection and get more games by saving a bit of money. Uh, obviously, the less that you spend on each game, the more games that you can get and add to your retro gaming collection. Um, if you're not looking to buy your games online, because it is you know, admittedly tricky to find great deals online for retro games. Uh, you can always go down to your local Goodwill store, pawn shops, um, flea markets. Uh, you're just not going to obviously go to these places and they're going to have every game that you want. It's going to be more of a search situation. But that's another way that you can potentially find good deals on retro video games. So thanks, guys, for stopping on in. I'm glad that you stuck around and listened to what I had to say. If you want more of this retro gaming content in the future, you can click that subscribe button. And any thumbs up on the video are greatly appreciated, and it really helps me out. So thanks for stopping on in, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.